Welcome back to the series everyone. In this episode I'm going to focus on the keys and keyboard restoration. And the first order of the day when I freed up the motherboard was to just clean uh, the base of the case. It was full of dust, full of grime and uh, I just had to vacuum it first so I could see the, the spots where there was corrosion. Um, aluminum doesn't corrode easily but it, it can corrode and there were several corrosion spots which I'm going to remove using my Dremel and a very hard rubber head. Those green heads that you're seeing, um, those are not sanding heads, uh, that's a very hard rubber and uh, I need to remove the superficial rust. Not the pitting, but the superficial rust it can remove without damaging the metal, without scratching uh, the metal. It will change uh, the way the metal reflects light, so you will be able to see where I did the work. Uh, but it doesn't remove any metal, doesn't scratch anything. Look at that uh, little spot there. Most of that rust is superficial, so if I just gently go over it with this rotating rubber tip, most of the rust go away. You see that there is an area of deeper pitting that remains. I'll treat all of those pitting areas with a, a rust converter that I will, I will use after this. But at first I essentially uh, I rub off uh, all the superficial rust uh, in the aluminum and you see that the sheen of the aluminum, the way it reflects light, changes so you can see where I have been uh, with, uh, with the tool. That's unfortunate, I would rather have a uniform look um, but again, um, this will preserve the case for much longer, it will stop corrosion and uh, the bottom of the case will be hidden underneath the motherboard anyway and the keyboard and all the other stuff so I am prioritizing here preservation over looks because hardly anyone will actually see this and even as far as looks go, although the metal reflects light differently it's still aluminum, you know, it's still metal or for my uh, British viewers, aluminium I actually prefer aluminium but I'm <laughs> trying to, to cater to the Americans um, I did this over a very large area of the case. There were, there were minor points of corrosion in multiple different places. So you can see where the metal was rubbed off, you know, uh, um, it's not sanded, it's just rubbed off. Um, and since this is uh, quite gentle on the metal, um, I used it liberally. And of course this consumes the rubber on the tip, <laughs> it's, it's much smaller now. And this is the second tip um, already. Um, so you consume this rubber, uh, you, you end up with rubber dust everywhere, uh, but it's effective. So next step, the next step now, I'm using a solution for cleaning metals. It's usually used in kitchen appliances and made of aluminum. Um, it's effective, it leaves an oily residue that I'll have to remove later, but it cleans very well. So I go over the entire case on both sides actually. Uh, with a microfiber cloth and, and this solution um, to clean bare metal. And I already noticed that uh, it's shining brighter now uh, with the grime off. I did it at the bottom as well. The bottom was very dirty as well. There is evidence of some liquid spills going through the screw holes. So I, I had to be thorough there. I also used uh, the Dremel with the rubber tip uh, on the more drastic places of corrosion on the bottom of the case as well. Now I'm dusting it off and um, I think I'm going to use now IPA um, isopropanol or isopropyl alcohol. Oh no, I'm using Roastio. I already used IPA on the corners of the case to remove the solution I used to clean the metal. And now I'm going to apply this rust converter. This is a Dutch version. You can find these things in any country. I'm applying it to the corners because I couldn't use my Dremel on the corners and the corners also are most susceptible to corrosion. So I'm, I'm and, and, and on the part where two metal sheets join together, I'm using rust converter there as well. And on the places uh, where there was pitting. And now the rust converter will leave a sort of a dark mark on the metal. It doesn't look great, uh, but again, its function overlooks since this is largely hidden. Now I'm using traditional WD-40 um, as a rust protector. Actually, WD-40 was developed originally to prevent rust on the metal skin of uh, ballistic missiles and rockets. 
uh, not as a lubricant. It works very well as a lubricant, but it was used at first um, yeah, for the same reason I'm using it here, which is to put a thin coat of this uh, oil that will prevent future corrosion. That's basically what I'm trying to achieve, to, to prevent any future, future corrosion by using traditional classical WD-40. Now the case, the wood panels had some, some scuff marks, some, some cracks, and I'm going to use this uh, wax um, that tries to imitate the color of walnut. I first use a lighter toned wax, and then I move on to a darker one. I'm already using the darker one now. And I fill the cracks, I fill the grooves and the scuff marks with it. Um, and then afterwards I use very fine sandpaper just to send off the ex excesses so we have a seamless result uh, hiding the original cracks and scuff marks. Since this is not painted, I can get away with sanding without uh, changing the looks of the thing. Now I'm going to use a furniture, uh, wooden furniture oil that will rehydrate the wood and give it a shine and protect it. Again, this wood is not painted, so I'm not going to paint it, I'm not going to varnish it, I'll keep it original. But it was very dry and it was cracking, and I, I, what you are seeing me do now, I did two or three times, because the wood was so dry, it was, it was thirsty and sucked up all the oil. But now it's protected, and now it's re-moisturized. -moist now the case itself, I'm going to show the, the end result <clears throat> only in the last episode. But I'm showing you what I use. I used a window cleaner, uh, which is the least uh, biting and abrasive uh, cleaning substance I have uh, to remove the grime. Uh, I'm not going to repaint it, I'll keep the original paint. And for the acrylic panel, the transparent acrylic uh, panel, after it's cleaned, I'm going to remove the scratches and scuff marks with Novus uh, acrylic uh, cleaner buffing it off uh, with the three levels of Novus. I'll show you the result uh, at the end. So now on to the keyboard. That's the original keyboard assembly. Slightly bent, uh, I can correct that, no problem. Um, the, the biggest problem is that uh, it's a capacitive uh, keyboard using capacitive foam pads, but the foam after 45 plus years is completely destroyed. It has disintegrated. You can only see now uh, the top foil and the bottom foil, but in between them where the foam was supposed to be, <laughs> the foam just melted away and disappeared. Look, that's the top foil that contacts the pads. And in between that and the bottom, there should be uh, five um, millimeters uh, of foam, but uh, it's dried out, uh, it's basically gone, it melted away and then dried out. Uh, I have to remove everything that remains there, including the top and bottom um, pads, and, and then uh, clean the keyboard and replace these foam pads completely. So I go one by one <laughs> with a pair of tweezers, uh, removing every bottom pad after having removed the top, and then I'm going to clean off uh, whatever detritus um, is left behind. I do that with a little portable vacuum cleaner, both the bottom and the top of the keyboard. And now it's the time to pull out uh, the keycaps with the keycap puller. One by one, there are two parts. There is the keycap itself and there is a metal uh, spring. Uh, and you see this spring just uh, went there. So I separate them in two buckets to clean them separately. Another one, another spring jumped in there. And, and I have to do that for all 85 keycaps and corresponding springs. Uh, the space bar is always the most difficult one because there are uh, stabilizing elements underneath that one has to remove carefully without breaking them. And they tend to be a little bit more difficult. Look at the grime. There is almost a kind of mud in the keyboard. It's like uh, dust accumulated there and sucked up air, humidity, turned into a kind of mud. I will have to watch, wash this, this base plate as well, not only the keycaps. I have to wash it under warm water and soap and give it a good scrub to remove all that, uh, that mud that is left in there. But first I put the metal springs in a, in a sealable uh, plastic bag and I'm going to bathe them in WD-40, the traditional WD-40, 
to remove whatever corrosion is there and, and, and prevent future corrosion. Uh, I let it soak in there overnight and only the next day I, I dry them up. Now the, the main PCB of the keyboard uh, is also full of residue of you know, de deteriorated, uh, decomposed foam. So I have to wipe that all off with an anti-static uh, uh, wipe because a lot of IC is in there. You don't want to cause any electrostatic discharge that will destroy the ICs. And after I sort of clean them away, I use this uh, Kimtech Science tissue paper, which is uh, ESD safe. It's also more resistant, it doesn't tear easily. And I apply some IPA or uh, isopropanol and I rub off all the keypads with that tissue and IPA to remove the, 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 the coarse grime first. And as a second step, I use Deoxit uh, D5, uh, which removes the rest of the dirt left and leaves an oily coat uh, that will prevent uh, corrosion uh, and improves the electrical contact um, as well. And once I'm done with that, it's time to deal with the three uh, socketed ICs. I have seen SOL20 boards in which all ICs are socketed. This one had only three socketed ICs, so I serviced uh, the sockets and I'm cleaning, basically cleaning the top of the IC so I can see their markings. And I finalize with a dusting with a ESD safe uh, uh, air duster to remove whatever residue of you know, foam pad is left there. And it's important to keep your workplace clean, so I finish off by cleaning my workbench a little bit. Now I use a floor cleaner. This is a good brand, a good Dutch brand, but you can use any strong floor cleaner uh, to clean the keypads. They were very, very grimy. I put them um, bathing in hot water, 50 or 60 degrees Celsius and a strong floor cleaner. I leave them there overnight and the next day I scrub each keycap one by one. I also scrubbed uh, the main keyboard plate that was that kind of mud. I did the same thing. I didn't shoot footage, but I did the same thing for the base plate as well. So you get a clean base plate and the springs are already all back. They are shiny because they are coated with a very thin layer of WD-40. Corrosion free and protected for the future. So that's already quite a bit of work uh, done in there. There are three special springs they are harder for the keycaps with LEDs. And these are the clean keycaps already scrubbed on all five sides and already dried up. So it's a matter of now uh, reassembling the keyboard. I also, um, the, the, the metal part where there were screws, the metal part was uh, damaged, was scratched and the paint went off. So I, I recoated them with black primer. And now I'm going to use, uh, when I reinstall it, I'm going to use plastic washers, black ones, to protect the metal, not let it get scratched again. And in general, just start putting the keycaps back uh, on top of the springs. Uh, these are the final three <laughs> that still need to go in. So you just press them in. You, actu you actually have to push in the key stem from the back as well, otherwise it doesn't click correctly. I did it afterwards. It's not enough to just push the key from the top. You have to support the key stem from beneath as well until you hear a click. But the keyboard is is looking great. It's shiny, looks new, and the keys are very pleasant uh, to use. And they have some tactile feel to them. It's not like an IBM keyboard, but you have some tactile feel. These are the replacement capacitive foam pads. They have a metal pad on top and another one on the other side of the foam. They have a capacitive effect. I'm going to use these double-sided self-adhesive buttons. This is basically double-sided tape in the form of a little circle. So I, I paste those to one side um, of the foam pads. Then I peel off the protective uh, pellicle and I just uh, glue them to the bottom of the key stem, just like in the original case. Uh, it took me the best part of some two hours <laughs> in one evening. Uh, not a fun job, uh, but needs to be done. And if, if, if you've done it uh, correctly, you can uh, press the keys on the keyboard and you can see the keypads 
protruding out. I think I'm going to demonstrate that now. There you go. Um, when they protrude out, um, they, they deliver a capacitive load to the pad on the main keyboard PCB, and that's how key presses uh, are registered. So at this point, this keyboard assembly now is, is like new. It's clean and with uh, brand new uh, capacitive uh, foam pads. Look, look at that, it's shiny, it smells good too. <laughs> and I'm finishing up with the Q-tips and IPA just to remove my finger fat uh, from those pads because I needed to, touch, needed to touch them when I was installing them. And now the keyboard PCB can go back in. I just have to line it up correctly. Make sure all the holes align, there are a bunch of holes. And once they are lined up, uh, it's a matter of uh, screwing back uh, the million screws. And I left them also overnight bathing in WD-40 to remove whatever corrosion they had and protect them. And the process I follow, I just dump them on a lot of kitchen paper in a bowl uh, for the oil to be drained away. Um, I use another piece of kitchen towel on top just to dry them off. It, they don't need to be completely dry. You want to leave a little bit of that oil as a protectant, but just take away the excess. And then you just screw them on one by one again. I, I like to start from the middle and work my way out to the edges. I think that's the best way to do it, if there is any way better than any other. That's the last screw. Um, going in. So we are very close to the end of this keyboard restoration. Look at that. Hopefully it works, but it looks new and it, it's great. It, the great there's a great feel yeah, to touch it. Now the assembly goes back into the case. I first do a general dusting. Dust always accumulates while you're working on these things. I line up uh, the four screws, connect the flat cable back. And um, the four screws, I forgot to leave them bathing in WD-40. So I'm just going to give them a little coat very quickly. Uh, they were not rusted, so this is just a protective layer. And I started put, putting one back in, but I forgot to add a black plastic washer so I don't damage the metal again, like in the original. I'm going to use a black plastic washer, so it will be essentially invisible unless you know what you're looking for. Uh, so it will look like the original, uh, but it will not bite into the metal and remove the protective paint that I just added. You line them up and you screw them back. And we have our keyboard back, so it's time to test it. Turn on the machine, we get our prompt now, and then I go and press each key <laughs> to make sure that they are all working. And they were all uh, working. No key was even marginal. All of them were reacting promptly to, to being pressed. No repeated key presses. This keyboard is working like uh, brand new. So I, this, this is it for this episode. The next time we are going to tackle um, the, the, the back plane and the two memory expansion cards. So you're getting very close to the end here. I hope you've been enjoying. Stay tuned and uh, join me for episode five. Take care. Bye bye.